Praise God. Greetings to every one of you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Uh, what a joy. We've been uh, having a wonderful time in the presence of God. The presence of God is so refreshing, so energizing, and I praise God for that. Over the last few weeks, we have, uh, as I've been speaking, I've been speaking on the topic of the signs of walking in the Spirit. How do we know uh, that, that the Christian life entails a life of walking in the Spirit, being filled in the Spirit? And the New Testament life is a spirit-filled, spirit-led life. We are born for a life in the flesh, but we're born again for a life in the spirit. God wants us to live that spirit-filled life. And, and I think anything less than that, as, I have been, as I've been sharing in the previous weeks, anything less than that is such a far poorer life than what God has intended for you and for me. God has intended for us to be led by the spirit, to walk in the spirit, you know, to live a life filled by the Holy Spirit. And if we are not living a spirit-filled life, then what we are living is a carnal life. That is not necessarily immoral, but carnal is not, you know, we can also be carnal when the Bible says, when Paul writes to them, are you not mere carnal men when you say, I follow Paul and I follow Apollos and all of that. Carnality is to walk in the knowledge of the flesh, in a life in the flesh, to be aware of the things of the flesh. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to take uh, on the ninth sign. We're going to have different signs of walking in the spirit. And the ninth sign that I want to talk about today of a spirit-filled life is in Revelation and chapter 4. And I want us to look at verse 1. Revelation and chapter 4 and we're looking together at verse 1. The Bible says, after these things, I looked and I beheld a door standing open in heaven. I looked and I beheld a door standing open in heaven. This is John the Beloved, the apostle of the Lord. He is banished away to the island of Patmos. And you know, he is a prisoner he doesn't have the freedom. He cannot leave the island. He cannot do what he wants, when he wants. He, there's no comfort that is provided for him. There is no home cooked food. There's nothing of that. But in the midst of that, the Bible says, John has a heaven encounter. In the midst of his difficult circumstance, many of us, when we meet people, we say, oh, oh how are you doing? I'm going through a very hard time. And, and, and believers oftentimes are depressed and sad and discouraged and all of that. But not John the Apostle. When everything was going wrong for John, the Bible says, after these things, I looked and I beheld. I saw something in the Spirit. One of the signs of a born-again Christian, of a Spirit-filled life, is that a born-again Christian who's filled and walking in the Spirit will see things in the Spirit. His sight will not only be what he naturally sees. His sight will be not on only natural, carnal things, what, what everybody gets to see. A spirit-filled Christian will see things that normal people don't see because they're not looking in the natural, they're looking in the spirit. Hallelujah. And I believe God wants every child of God that the spirit's eyes will be opened. The eyes of understanding will be open. The Bible talks about a spirit eyes and a spirit ears. Our human, as a human, we have human ears and we have human eyes. And so through the natural, we see, we wake up in the morning, we open our eyes. And, and if we can, we will see or we open, you know, we become aware to what we are hearing. And, uh, you know, or we would have super, some people can get very, very sensitive in their hearing because they become aware of things around. And God, for a child of God, God says, I want you to be able to see things in the spirit that you don't see in the natural. In Acts in chapter 5 and verse 1 through 11 is a story of Ananias and Sapphira. The story of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts in chapter 5 you know the story of Ananias and Sapphira where the Bible says that they, this husband and wife duo, they went and they sold a piece of property. And they kept some money back for themselves with the wife's full knowledge. And bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. So here is the scenario. Ananias is bringing a portion of the money that he got from a sale of land 
and he's laying it at the apostles' feet. Now, why did he and his wife do this? Because a couple of verses before in Acts chapter 4 and verse 36, the Bible says, And Joseph, a Levite of Cyprian birth, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translation means the son of encouragement, and who owned a tract of land. Oh, I almost read it as who owned a flat. All right. <laughs> or an apartment. Huh? Who owned a tract of land and sold it and, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So here is Ananias and Sapphira. They heard about this man called Joseph or, or, or Barnabas. And Barnabas sold this piece of property, a tract of land, and he picked up the money and he came and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Ananias and Sapphira, when they heard this, they said, that's a pretty neat thing to do. And maybe they wanted to enjoy the attention. They wanted others to know we also did this, you know, so that they would be among the first few people who sold a piece of property and they would get noticed. I want you to know this is in the house of God where the fear of God is there. Suddenly two people are seeing things carnally. Instead of looking at things in the spirit, instead of seeing what is happening in the spiritual dimensions behind them, they're seeing only what is happening in the natural. Everything that happens in your life in the natural, there is a spiritual dimension that is happening behind. When you know that maybe you're, you, you know, you're falling in love with somebody that you, you, know, you want to have a relationship with, which God is, you know, the hand of God is not in that. There is a spiritual dimension of the demonic host who want to mess up with your life and take you away from the plans of God. But when God is, say, guiding you to be married to somebody specific, and that is God's heart and plan for that, there is a host of heaven that comes behind you, just like in the case of Isaac and Rebekah, that Eliezer was led by God. There is a spiritual activity that is happening behind things from the kingdom of darkness and things from the kingdom of light. And as a child of God, you and I must be spiritually sensitive in our eyesight. You know, there was a lady many years ago, her name was Helen Keller. She said like this, what is worse, what is worse than not having eyesight is to have eyes and yet not see. Which means you can see things but have no vision. God wants you to have spiritual vision. What is the use of me having eyes and having no spiritual eyesight? Not being able to see what God is doing in the spirit realm. And I believe God can cause you and me to do that. So an innocence affair, I thought, maybe, you know, well, this is a good thing. They sold this property and they took some of the money and kept some of the money with them. And uh, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Became a very serious thing. Peter was like, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep some back of the money, the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? Peter saw into Ananias' heart. Peter saw into Sapphira's heart in the spiritual realm. God can cause you to see things in the spiritual realm. Many times you'll be meeting people and on the outside they'll be very pleasing and pleasant to you. They'll be very sweet to you. But sometimes they may not be for you. You know, in the Christian ministry, I'm always aware of different kinds of people. In the Christian ministry, in the churches. There are people that come to church or that can come to a ministry or can come to any organization or any gathering of any kind of gathering because... They are, they are for what you are for. All right? You love Jesus. They love Jesus. They are for what you are for. So they come together. Some people, when they come together, they, are, they don't come together because they're for what you are for. In some gatherings, they come together, say, in protest or whatever. The whole group of people come together. They're not for what everybody is for. They come together because they're all against what everybody is against. All right? So people can gather because they're for what you're for. People can come together because they're against what you are against. So they just want to protest together. But there are only a few people that are not just against what you are against or for what you are for, but they're for you. They're for you as an individual. And that's why God places you in families. When God places you as a husband, wife, couple, team, God doesn't just want you to be for what your spouse is for, against what your spouse is against. God wants you to be for your spouse. No matter whether they do right or wrong. 
God wants you to be for them. And in a nice sense, a very hard. God, God caused Peter to look into their heart beyond the outside pleasantries. You know, when someone comes, sells a piece of land and brings an offering, uh, you know, anybody who's got to, any ministry that's got to receive that offering, don't care whether it's the whole amount or the small amount or whatever, you know, thank you, Jesus, whatever the amount, just bring it on, man, just bring it on. But not Peter, nor the Holy Spirit. God wants to look into the motives of their heart. And we need to see things in the spirit. God begins to, begins to work in our lives and see what is God doing behind this. We have to be people but that pray, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. That I can see beyond. I can see. I can look beyond what I am seeing in the natural. Hallelujah. And Peter looked at him and said, how did you even conceive this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but you've lied to God. And he heard these words and Ananias fell down and breathed his last. And a great fear came upon all who heard this. Peter seeing didn't stop there. Suddenly, three hours later, his wife, Sapphira, comes in. And he looks at her and he says, uh, and, uh, and he looks at her and, uh, and says, uh, tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. And Peter said to her, why is it that you've agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? You see, many times when we, when, when we, when we do things like this, we don't realize we're testing the Lord. We're testing the Lord. And behold, he says, he saw in the spirit. He says, behold, the fear of them that carried your husband out are standing at the door. And they, are, they just buried your husband at the door, at your husband, and they shall carry you out as well. He saw in the spirit what was going to happen. I want you to know a child of God that is walking in the spirit beforehand will see things in the spirit before it comes to pass. Hallelujah. There are many stories I could tell you from my own walk with God. Things I've seen over nations. Things I've seen over places and people that God has shown me ahead of time and it comes to pass. Why does God do that? Because he wants you to be aware and he wants you to be ready of the times that you're living in. The spiritual eyes are open. In 2 Kings and chapter 6 and verse 17, you know the prophet Elisha. Elisha was one day, he was, you know, uh, he, he, what, what the king, the enemy kings were surrounding them and wanted to now come and attack and capture Elisha. Because someone told the enemy king, there's this prophet called Elisha in Israel. What you speaking in the bedroom, the guy, you know, he, he just knows whatever you're talking in private. So the king understands this guy, you grab him because every plan they made in their private bedroom or private in their drawing rooms, this prophet was telling the king of Israel, they're coming this way, they're coming to attack through there, this is their plan. So the, the enemy king said, let's just go and arrest this fellow. And the armies came and surrounded them. The servant of Elisha comes into Elisha's place. Oh, Elisha, my, my lord, my master, these people, the armies, the enemy armies have surrounded. And Elisha looks at him and says, come, servant, step out. And he says, Lord, you know, he says, open his eyes, Lord, that he can see that there are more on our side than what he sees in the natural. In the natural, all he could see was two people, him and Elisha. In the natural, all he could see was fear. I don't know what's going to happen to our future. In the natural, all we can see is despair and hopelessness and impossibility. But when God opens your eyes, you can see life and healing and hope. And you can see a future. You can see possibilities. When God sometimes speaks things to me, the first thing that comes in my heart is, oh my God, how is it possible? How, 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 Lord? And then we plug into the spirit and we begin to see in the supernatural. Hallelujah. How many understand what I'm talking about? A Christian life is supposed to be a spirit-filled, spirit-led life. Elisha was having fun that day. He went to his servant and he said, Lord, open his eyes, Lord. And so suddenly his eyes opened and he saw the armies. He saw the Lord's angel armies surrounding. And you will never see that unless you see it in the spirit. Hallelujah. I've had, you know, like I, like I was sharing the other day, uh, we were in one of our Trotby uh, uh, prayer summits. Our team had gathered from different places. And uh, while we were worshiping God and I just was looking around, I suddenly started seeing angels all around the place. And... Uh, there was a tremendous move of God. Angelic hosts were literally standing in the place. And uh, I, I'm telling myself, well, because the Lord is showing me in the spirit. And that's why I'm seeing this. This is wonderful. And I saw, you know, our, our pastor from Nagaland, Pastor Alam. 
And he was standing in the back of the hall. And when I was looking, I saw a, a huge angel in the spirit. I'm seeing angels standing behind Alam, right in the back of Alam. And Alam's in the back of the hall. The worship is going on. We are just leaders and people on the team. We are ministering. We are worshiping all that. I see this huge angel. While I'm worshiping, and while we're, uh, the mic was in my hand, I said, I see angels all around this place. The eyes of our understanding were open to see the angelic host. And then I'm seeing this huge angel stand behind Alam, Pastor Alam. And then I say, uh, I see angels in this place. And from the back, Alam says, that's right. And then he says, there's one standing right over here. And then, you know, the angel I saw was a tall one. So Alam's saying, there's one standing right over here. And he says, and that's a tall one. How you can see things in the spirit. Because the spirit realm is a real realm. The Holy Spirit realm is a real realm. The natural man doesn't understand it. You know why? Because the Bible says he's not spiritually discerned. The question I want to ask us today is, are you spiritually discerned? That you can see in the spirit. What God is doing in the supernatural. Can you see when you're going through a dark part of your life. Can you see in the spirit what God is doing. When God is allowing you to go through a challenging time. Can you see in the spirit what God is doing. Hallelujah. There are things in your life that God brings in. God wants you to see. So God, Elijah, Elisha goes to him and says, Lord open this fellow's eyes. And he suddenly saw the hosts of uh, the armies of heaven. And then he turned towards the enemy armies and said, Lord close these fellow's eyes. And the whole army went blind. And they led them by the hand and brought them into the city. And he said, now you feed all of them. And he said, feed all of them, then send, back, send them back home. Why? Because he knew, he understood the power of seeing things. One, one opening of the eyes and seeing in the spirit brought peace between the nations. If God opens your eyes to see things in your circumstances, you can see things according to God's plan. Not according to your plan, but according to God's plan. You will begin to understand things in the spirit. That is why every child of God has to constantly get used to seeing in the spirit. The Bible is so beautiful even as it talks about, you know, uh, different people and different stories and different uh, circumstances that are there in people's lives. And I believe God wants to really move in the lives of, in the lives of people. And, and God wants to pour out an anointing in such a mighty way. You see, God wants us to see. God wants to see. Sometimes we can be speaking to a, a Holy Ghost encounter and still not be able to see it. In John's Gospel chapter 4, we know that the woman of Samaria, Jesus goes there and he says, can you give me a drink? And she says... Uh, you know, uh, yeah, you, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. How is it that you ask him a drink? And he says, well, if you knew who I was, you'd ask of me. So many things in our life we miss because we don't know. We miss because we can't see. We can't see what is God is doing. That is why God is saying, I want you to build your spirit man. So that you can see in the spirit. You can hear in the Spirit. You can walk in the Spirit. You can talk in the Spirit. That you will walk with the Holy Spirit every day of your life in such a powerful way. How many of you want to see in the Spirit? Amen. You can do that. And it's not for a special few. God wants everybody. God wants everybody to have that kind of a spiritual walk. You see, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Lord talks about his disciples and one day... Uh, you know, one day God, Jesus comes to Nicodemus in John's gospel in chapter 3. And there was a Pharisee called Nicodemus and he comes there and Jesus answers and tells him, unless you're born again, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus is saying, how can I enter into my mother's womb again and be born again? And he says, no, it's not talking about that. Flesh begets flesh. Spirit begets spirit. If you want to see in the spirit, you need to build your spirit man. God wants you to build your spirit man. How does that happen? By spending time with God, in worship, in reading the word of God, in, in walking with the Holy Spirit, in talking to the Holy Spirit. You will begin to see things in the spirit. Jesus tells Nicodemus, the wind blows wherever he wishes. Wherever it wishes. In the life of Nathaniel, Nathaniel was one day minding his own business. And Jesus, you know, Philip comes to Nathaniel and says, you know, you know, I have found the Messiah. And Nathaniel comes to him and they meet up and Jesus looks at him and says, uh, before I saw you, I saw you sitting there under that tree. 
And Nathaniel is shocked. He said, how, how, how did you know sitting under the tree? He said, you're surprised at this. Nathaniel, I want to tell you, days are coming when the heavens will be open and you will see angels ascending and descending. You will see spiritual things. God is telling Nathaniel, you're surprised at one prophetic word that I saw you under the tree. God had seen you at that time. I want to tell you, supernatural things are awaiting everyone that walks in the spirit. Hallelujah. I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has the mind conceived what great and awesome things God has prepared for them that love him. But God will reveal it to us by the Holy Spirit. That's why every child of God must be plugged into the Holy Spirit. In the life of Nathaniel, life of Nicodemus, all these people, they, they begin to understand the importance of plugging in the Spirit. Luke's Gospel 10, 18. One day the disciples come to Jesus and tell Jesus, 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 did you, do you know when we said, in Jesus' name, we cast those demons out? Oh, they were so super excited. They were excited. Demons are listening to them. And so they come to Jesus and tell him, do you know that demons are cast out in your name? Jesus looks at them and says, you know, he says, you saw demons being cast out? But let me tell you what I saw. Luke 10, 18 says, I saw Satan falling from heaven like lightning. What you saw was one demon coming out. What I saw was demonic kingdom being broken. Hallelujah. I saw what was, what was coming. You see, by that time, Satan had not been defeated. He had not been disarmed on the cross. But yet Jesus saw what was going to happen in the coming days. Hallelujah. God wants you and me to be so plugged into the spirit that we will be used to seeing in the spirit. We'll be so used to seeing things in the spirit. Hallelujah. We must ask the Lord, Lord, give me eyes of discernment. Another sign of walking in the spirit. How do I know what's a sign of walking in the spirit? The tenth sign of walking in the spirit I want to talk about today is that every child of God, born again child of God, will hear in the spirit. The Holy Spirit's voice will become common to you. Revelation 4, the same scripture that we were looking at. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says, After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet. There was a voice he had heard, like the sound of a trumpet. That same voice was speaking with John in Patmos, under arrest, when he is supposed to be depressed. He's hearing, seeing heaven open and hearing, you know, trumpet sound voices. I mean, that's a party time at Patmos. The guy was having a good time. And he says, I heard the first voice heard like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. Come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. He's saying, he heard the voice, come up here. When he said, come up here, he said, I want you to come here so I can show you. Seeing in the spirit and hearing in the spirit. Every child of God must learn to walk with the Holy Spirit in such a way that you will hear things in the spirit. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 goes like this. You know, Isaiah 30 verse 21, this is a powerful verse. I love this scripture so much. I have, you know, thought about it. I've shared about it so often. The Bible says like this, your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way, walk in it. Whether you turn to the left or you turn to the right. What is God promising every child of God? Don't ever think that you will go without direction. God is saying, whether you turn to the left or you turn to the right, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, hallelujah. How many of you want that kind of direction in your life? I want to tell you it is available for you from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. The Holy Spirit wants you to hear his voice. The spiritual life is an amazing life. This Christian life, I've spent, uh, I can, if I can remember almost all my Christian life, I have keenly listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's never been always what I want to hear, but it's always been worth it. Hallelujah. You can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. God is promising you, whether you turn to the left or you turn to the right, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Many times in your life, it's so important for them, for us to learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit. 
It's so important for us to learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit. And in my life, the Holy Spirit oftentimes tells me things I don't like to hear. But I'm used to being rebuked by the Holy Spirit. Many people say, no, 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 if you, if you hear that kind of a voice, that's not God, that's the devil. Because God always tells you, my son, everything will be fine. I can just imagine you as parents also, whatever your children do, they'll be taking the television and breaking it. You walk in there and say, my son, everything is going to be fine. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, one day, I was a little boy. And the TV was kept on a tall stand. <laughs> I thought, how dare this TV be taller than me? I, I would have been, I don't know, I would have been maybe seven, eight years old. So I grabbed the top of the television and I did a pull-up. And then along with the television, <laughs> me and the TV and everything went down and it fell on me. I was, I was a little boy. I didn't know I had the strength to lift it up and pick it up. That day, my father came home. When he came home, everything wasn't all right. You see, he wasn't telling me, my son. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I'm okay with the Holy Spirit rebuking me. Because I know of my earthly father who loves me and still rebukes me. In the same way, I'm comfortable with God in heaven who loves me and can still rebuke me. Because he loves me enough to rebuke me. He cares enough to rebuke me. So one day, you know, a couple of people, many, many years ago, a couple of people were leaving our ministry and they were leaving with strife and rebellion and they, they caused a lot of trouble. And my heart was so broken with that, that season of our life. It was the early 2000s and my heart was really broken with that season of my life. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, why? Why is this going on? And you know, when, when people live like that, live like that in rebellion, and it, I had some senior uh, leaders or other leaders who are friends around the country, pastors of large churches, when they heard about it, they called me up, they knew some of these people, they called me up and said, John, don't worry, don't worry, they're just living in rebellion, God's on your side, just leave it alone, it's okay. And every time one of these pastors would call me, hear the story, they'd ask me how they're doing, and I said, no, they left, it was a problem, and I had this problem. They said, don't worry, God is with you. Oh, they're just rebellious people, they just lived in rebellion. The moment I heard that, you know, I would be comforted. You know, senior leaders understand what we're going through. Just like we all like people to agree with what we're feeling. Until I think a couple of months, a few months later, I was in Andhra Pradesh in our discipleship school. And while the classes were going on and I was in the canteen, I was just walking up and down. It was a big canteen, so I was just walking up and down and praying. And while I was praying, the Holy Spirit suddenly spoke to me. And I was, asking the, I was talking to the Lord about this. I was actually grieving in my heart. I was grieving that they left. And I was grieving that people of God have to end up fighting with one another. I was grieving. I said, Lord, no. Why, Lord? You know, today, as I look back many years later, it's about 15, 17 years later, or, or 20 years later, I, I still grieve. I still grieve because I don't like people walking away in strife. I don't like strife. I, I want people to walk in the Spirit, to love God. So while they, le they left, and a few couple of months later, I was talking to God, the Holy Spirit spoke to me right there in that canteen in Andhra Pradesh. And the Holy Spirit said, John, you know why they left? I said, why, Lord? And the Lord said, because of you. And I said, because of me? <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? And the Lord said, John, it's not about what you did. The problem is what you didn't do. I said, what didn't I do? The Lord said, when people come into your ministry, you need to teach them when they join, how to join. And when it's time to leave, how to leave in a godly way. The thing is, they left in strife and they left in problems and all of that because you didn't teach them how to leave. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I didn't know. And the Lord said, I know you didn't know. I'm just telling you. So I said, okay, Lord, that discipleship school onwards, I, in, in the curriculum, I added on a topic called conflict management, how to handle conflicts and how to walk in covenant, how to join in peace. And when it's time to go, how to leave in peace, how to leave with blessing, how to leave. And I want to tell you to the glory of God, from the, whatever I learned in those days, I incorporated in the church today. And I can tell you to the glory of God today, these 14, 15 years, we being as a church, we've not had one problem of strife like that anymore. Hallelujah. In all these years. Why? Because what the Lord taught me, I just incorporated it and that helped us. It's, it's so important to hear 
in the spirit. And what I heard was a rebuke from God. What I heard was a correction from God. Many people like to hear only nice things from God. You know, you'll be, you're sweet, you're nice, everything's going to be okay, nothing's going to go wrong. And, and I don't like it, you know, sugar-coated. Bring it on, Lord. Tell me. Let's fix this, Lord. Let's work on this, Lord. God wants to begin to speak into your life and he wants you to be able to hear him. Many people are not willing to hear God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy and chapter 3, the Bible says in the last days, many people will turn away from godly counsel. Their ears will be itching to hear what they want to hear. And this is a problem many times as children of God. Instead of hearing in the things of the Spirit, we want to hear people who will tell us what we want to hear. We will complain about things we want to hear. And we are hoping they will tell us things we are going to hear. But that's not what God is planning. God is a Father. And God, our loving Father, wants us to hear things in the Spirit. And we will be willing to say, Lord, rebuke me, correct me. You know what the Bible says? I love the scripture. It says, let a wise man strike me. It says anointing oil. Let a wise man strike me. It says anointing oil. How many of us would imagine the rebuke from a wise man would be like the anointing flowing down our head? But many of us will get rebuked and we'll say, no, he says he's a Christian. Look how he spoke to me. He, he, he was angry or he rebuked. And, and the psalmist is saying, the, the rebuke of a wise man is an anointing upon my head. The Bible says the, the words, wounds from, a, wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy multiplies kisses. The enemy will multiply kisses and say, you're the best, everything is good. I rather have God tell me things of correction. One of the things God does in your life and my life when he speaks to us is correction. The prophet comes to David and said and shares a story that there was someone that had a little lamb and the name came to the, and you know the neighbor they killed that lamb and took it out. And David said, Who is that fellow? Prophet Nathan said, You are that one. And David had gone, Me. The prophet had the gall to tell him, You're that one. David had the humility to accept he was wrong. When we hear from the Spirit, we must tell the Lord, bring it on. Tell me correction, Lord. Do me, Lord. Change me. You do what it takes to change me, Lord. Because I don't want to spend the next 30 years of my life living in my self-pity and missing out on 30 years of an amazing walk with God. Hallelujah. God wants us to hear in the Spirit. God wants to give us, you know, He wants to give us correction. Not only correction, God wants to give us direction. Whether you turn to the left or turn to the right, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. God, as a child of God, one of the signs of walking in the Spirit is that you will hear direction from God. Hallelujah. I was, uh, uh, you know, a few months ago, I was flying into Dubai and as I was landing there uh, on, the, uh, on the tarmac, I was minding my own business, doing my own thing. I was looking outside the window and for whatever reason, I was just staring at the runway. You know, the early days when you first fly into a country and you're a man of God, from the time the plane is landing, you begin to pray in the spirit. Like they say, you know, locally, Judah, Baba, Sheba, Mama. You know, you're praying in the spirit. You're so full of the Holy Ghost while the plane is landing on the tarmac. Now, the early days, I would pray in the spirit so much that because I, it was an exciting new journey. But the more I went and the more I went, I went 10 and 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 times. After some time, when you're landing, you know the immigration officers, you know which way, which door opens which way, you know, you know the airport so well. The other day we flew in somewhere, someone was telling me, that's such a small airport. You go in, you see them, and you step out. You know, you, you, you kind of know the, the whole system so well. So when you keep going so often, after some time, you lose that, that initial excitement of going to new, every new nation I go to, I land praying in the spirit. So by now, I wasn't praying in the spirit. I'm looking outside the window, minding my own business. I'm just minding my own business when suddenly, suddenly, unexpectedly, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me out of nowhere. And I was, I was you know, I was a little stretched my leg out and I was just sitting back on the chair looking outside the window. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, John, behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go. The Lord said, the Lord, you know, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, 
I, the Lord, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and Isaac. The land on which you lie, I'm going to give it to you. And I will, your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth and shall spread out to the west and to the east and north and south. And in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you. I will not leave you until I bring you back to this land and fulfill everything that I promised you. I slowly sat up on the chair. And I was staring outside the runway. I said, you got my attention, Lord. Suddenly out of nowhere, you, you might be minding your own business. Bang, the Holy Spirit can speak to you. You can be making a, a cheesecake and God can speak to you. You can be just cleaning the floor and God can speak to you. Out of nowhere, God can speak to you. If you will keep your heart open to what God has to say. Hallelujah. You know, the number of times. One day I was, I was really, really sad. I was just really depressed. And so I was going on this bus journey from Bangalore to Daungere. Uh, and all, some things had gone messy in my life. And there were all kinds of problems and all that. I was so depressed. I was sitting on that. I was just sitting in that, uh, you know, in that bus really, really sad. And you know these uh, buses that go, some of them luxury buses. So there were no seats available in the bus. So they, they get, opened the driver's cabin for me to be able to sit in the driver's cabin. You know, you, they know the seats there. They let you sit in the front in the driver's cabin. So I paid the money. I'm sitting in the driver's cabin going a six-hour journey to the city. And while I'm going there, I have full view of the entire, you know, everything in the front. And I was really sad. And I was telling the Lord, Lord, why is this happening in my life? Lord, all of that. And suddenly the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Suddenly he says, John, look at the trees. I said, what about the trees? The Lord said, where are their branches? I said, the branches are there. And the Lord said, do you know, in sunny times and stormy times, in cold season and warm season, every season, he says, do you know these trees never drop their branches? They're always lifted high. They are praising me in every season of their life. And then the Lord asked me, and what are you doing? And I'm like, I said, in good times, I'm praising you. In bad times, I'm crying. I'm complaining. The Lord said, John, it's about time you begin praise me like these trees do. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to do that. I'm going to learn to praise you in every season of my life. Hallelujah. If you are listening, God will speak to you. Whether you turn to the left, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way you walk in it. I just landed on that airport. I sat up and I said, Lord, you got my attention. What is this, Lord? The Lord said, you remember I told you some time ago, I have an assignment for you here. I said, yes, Lord. The Lord said, the time is coming. Get ready for an assignment. Out of nowhere, God can speak to you. He can tell you things you're not ready for. But everything he tells you, will be good. Our problem is we only give ear to the ones we like to hear. We only want to listen to the people that we like to listen to. God's voice will bring us correction. God's voice will bring us direction. But God's voice will also bring us encouragement. The Bible declares that He is a God who is for you. He is not a God that is against you. Three, all through the Bible if there is one thing that repeats again and again and again and again, God looks at us and says, Fear not. Every circumstances, don't be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. And I think it's so important for you to hear that voice from God. Not just a prophecy or for you to have your word. Your word from God. It's not like somebody encouraging you. When God speaks to you, everything changes. A boldness comes in your spirit. Faith arises in your heart. Clarity comes where there is no clarity. There's nothing like hearing a voice from God for yourself. And you will just sit up and you'll say, bring it on, Lord. Bring it on. We can handle this. 366 times in the Bible, the Bible says, fear not. Don't be afraid. One for every single day of your life, even if it's a leap year. That you will not walk in fear. Because God is a God of encouragement. God wants to encourage you in every circumstance. Most of you know the story. When my son was born, he was very sick. And that night we didn't know what to do. I thought he was going to die. I had no idea what's going on. I was really, really, really upset. Suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to walk into that ICU. I'm going to heal him. One word from God. Suddenly faith arose. If someone else had told me that, don't worry, it'll be okay. There wouldn't be faith in my heart. But when God spoke into my heart, faith arose. Hallelujah. One word from God can change your entire destiny. One word from God can change the entire direction of your life. 
one word from god can change the entire perspective of the way you look at things because his word can be trusted hallelujah and i believe god wants every one of you to walk in the spirit he wants you to see in the spirit he wants you to hear in the spirit so that every single day of your life you will live a spirit filled spirit led life it's an amazing life people of god this is not only for pastors and leaders this is for every child of god whether you turn to the left or you turn to the right you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it and i want to tell you this is what god wants to do for you this is what god wants to do for you let's close our eyes and pray today father i thank you that you're a god that who's speaking even today not my ideas lord but your ideas can be trusted not my will but your will and i pray in jesus name father for the church even as we bow hearts before you father open our eyes that we will perceive things we will see things in the spirit that we don't understand in the natural open our eyes that we will see things we will we'll be able to see things lot so many people are struggling because they are not able to see their own limitations they are not able to see what is stopping them from a, an amazing life with god open our eyes that we will be able to see lord that you will bring us correction you will bring us direction bring us a uh, lord all kinds of encouragement i pray in jesus name that lord you will do this in our life and father i pray in jesus name specifically also that we will we will hear in the spirit that whether we turn to the left or to the right we will hear a voice behind us saying this is the way walk in it i just commit this whole day and lord god the life that every one of us are called to live i come into your hands fill us with the spirit in a fresh way today and i believe there is a miracle that god wants to do in your life but he wants to put a word in your heart he wants to put a word in your spirit a word in your womb a word in your circumstance god spoke it and the impossibilities opened up the angel gabriel said you that you're going to conceive by the holy spirit mary said how is it possible so the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the most high shall overshadow you and the child that's going to be born in your womb shall be called the son of the living god what is impossible will become possible when you hear in the spirit when you see in the spirit father we thank you today for what you're doing thank you father for the church and everyone that's gathered thank you as a family that we will listen and respond to the holy spirit and we will live for you in jesus mighty name we pray never said amen 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 god bless you have a wonderful spirit filled week ahead